uh, sort of the shifting ground of the K through eight neuroscience in the classroom. Uh, and so our next speaker, his name is uh, Mr. Ben Robbins, and he has come in gracefully from uh, Novi, Michigan, and he is from Novi Meadows Middle School. He he's in the sixth grade. And like many of us in this room, uh, he's done outreach as well. He's gone back to his fifth grade classroom and has taught neuroscience to them. He's here to talk about that today. Um, so just to, uh, I went through Ben's CV uh, this morning and I went through it. So I'll go through that briefly. Uh, he's a graduate of the fifth grade house at Novi Meadows, uh, moved to the sixth grade house. He's also a Boy Scout, uh, and he is a second class rank. Uh, he's got many awards and recognitions. He just recently received the U Rock Award in Boy Scouts. And he's also a member of his uh, school's Math Olympiad team. And uh, in his private life, he's a avid cook and a gardener. So please welcome Mr. Ben <laughs> Thing called the spiker box, 
things just come back to your brain. I was a bit able to bring in. But I'll talk about that later. Right now, I want to talk about which animal we're using. Now, despite what your teachers may say, I, in my little world, the black cockroach exists. <laughs> and as you notice, it's missing a leg. That's because we need it like for the procedure. <laughs> but since we don't have any black cockroaches with us today, if there are any out there, we had to use South American cockroaches. So now, while I was talking about the procedure before, you can see we cut off the cockroach leg, then we put needles in here, which attach to the spiker box. And then, if you notice, there's tons, we're gonna, this is the experiment part. There's tons and tons of hairs in one of them. If we zoom in, on each hair is a little neuron. And the harder you push on that hair, the, the faster that neuron under it will fire. Go crazy. <laughs> so now, if I can do this right, yes. <laughs> Having a little problems with it before. As you can see, we, how many of you have had surgery in here? Just a show of hands. A lot of you, about half. Well, about half of these cockroaches are going to have a surgery. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you know, they like kind of numb you out so you don't feel the pain. We have to do the same thing to these cockroaches so we don't get sued. And so they, <laughs> yeah, so we don't get sued. <laughs> so that's what we already did. So now we need to cut off their leg. The second one's just back up. So hopefully <laughs> we don't have to have surgery today. Thank you. 
under the hair before? Uh-huh. We're going to test it. Then. Now, i got a pen here, and I'm going to touch it. i got to have you guys listen to see if the spikes get loud. Can anyone hear that? Yep. Yeah. Test and test of one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is it getting louder? Yep. No. My voice is. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, you, if you're if you up here in the front row, you should be able to hear it. It is getting louder once I touch it. But I want you to be able to see that. So. We're going to plug in an iPad, and yes, it's an iPad too. As my brother would go to the first conclusion. And that's what spikes look like, for those of you who haven't seen it. So, you watch the spike, and I'll touch it with the pen again. See, you go crazy? Mm -hmm. It's like parties in college. <laughs> How would you know? <laughs> I'm a little concerned about that. Yeah. But the neurons are ha kind of having their own little party saying we're being touched. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so now we're going to do an old experiment. Even before they could record spikes, they've been able to stimulate them. Now, don't ask me why, but this guy hung out during the lightning storm, frog legs on a coil. <laughs> Crazy. But he noticed that they were twitching. So any hypothesis of what will happen if we plug in the iPad? I, I meant iPod? iPhone? Your basic eyes. Okay. <laughs> no hypothesis? Okay. There were a lot of hypotheses in the fifth grade. Did you <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can everyone see the light? No. No. No, you can't. Do you see it now? Yep. Yeah. Get closer in to the light. Now, can you see it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's good. Okay. Now we're gonna first we're gonna play my music. <laughs> Hopefully. He's not going. <laughs> Oh, it was working before. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah, it was pushed too far on the ground, but now since it's a little bit off above the ground, it can tap. On every downbeat, it taps. That's because it's not iPod going. slash iPhone slash iPad, your basic guys. Your basic guys send out electric pulses on the downbeat. And so now, since we hooked it up to the nervous system, they're making them fight. It so doesn't go as good as it was. I'm going to play my mom's music. <laughs> <laughs> now, it might be a little violent. The leg might not survive. But we're going to see if he likes it or not. Are you on the headphone output? Yeah. 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 Classical. <laughs> Looks like like step. That's because there's no downbeat, and the downbeat's the strongest part to stimulate of electricity going out to stimulate the nervous system. So, since we're not, since there's no downbeat, it can't tap to anything. It's either that or we killed it with the song. <laughs> So, 
Now we're going to go back to my music to see if it's still alive. Okay. So now, instead of that, any questions? Because the fifth graders were curious. <laughs> Give us one or two examples of your own hypotheses, and if you if you made your own, generated your own hypotheses and tested them using the spiker box. Well, actually, I've done this experiment many times and seen it done even more. So it's pretty hard to make a hypothesis if you've already seen it. How about your students? How about your students? Oh, but my students, they had quite a few hypotheses. One of them was correct. One of them was that the light would come alive. Um, some of them were that stay dead. So, many hypotheses. And so, the kids were very interested in them. Even though we were using cockroaches. I mean, I would have preferred my friend to block cockroaches, but, you know. Uh, we have a question out here. Um, yeah, hi. Um, I walked in a bit late, so I'm sorry I, I missed this, but um, that device that you had, can you just get that on back of our brains? Or how, how, how are you able to get that? <laughs> Actually, yeah. You can probably buy it for like $100 at Backyard Brains. And then if you want to do it yourself approach, it's even less expensive. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Well, um, um, I don't want to repeat the whole thing. Did you, at, at the beginning, did you show how to do it yourself then? Um, I did not have to show how to build it because their instructions come with the packet that they saw. Okay, so, so they saw that whole thing sort of as a, as yeah. a set. Yeah, and you can also buy the cockroaches. <laughs> Thank you. Unfortunately, you don't sell cockroaches. still disappointed. <laughs> What's wrong with finding your own? Uh, Sorry, can you repeat that? Why can't you find your own from your backyard? Well, that's because cockroaches... Here's a little fact. If cockroaches were the size of a cheetah, they'd be the fastest animal in the world. <laughs> so, for their size, they're super fast. They can outrun you in a race. <laughs> so... But South American cockroaches are different because, yes, they're just as fast, but they're used to, since they're cold-blooded, they slow down when they get colder. And so the, since they're used to South America, which is probably one of the warmest spots in the world, good vacation, <laughs> um, we, prob we have to bring it, once we bring it here, they slow down, so it's easier to keep them if they escape. I think we have time for one more question. You did a very good job uh, presenting that. And I was just curious, you said you've seen this a number of times and presented it a number of times. How many times did you have to see it before and do it yourself before you were comfortable going into the classroom and teaching this kid? Um, actually, I never did it before the classroom what? the stuff. But I've seen it done. Yeah. About how many times? Um, I saw it done once before. Backyard Brains actually came into my classroom and while well, I was in fifth grade and did a presentation. So then I got to come back and do it. Miss Graham. Thank you. 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 Thank you.